Here we are in the museum's collection area, where they store the fossils they find for researchers to come and study them. And Josh has an interesting fossil to show us. What we have here is our latest Triceratops skull. This is the Garni skull. What we have here is the frill, which is the shield part of the skull. And on the right here, we have the left squamosal. The left squamosal is one of the bones of the skull. What's unique about this bone is it has some weird bumps and grooves in it. You see a long mark here, this really rough area here. So this area right here is really rough and rugose. This shouldn't be like this, it should be really smooth. This I believe to be a bone infection. The only way to diagnose whether it's a bone infection or not is to get a CAT scan done. CAT scan? I thought we were talking about dinosaurs! No, 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 we're not gonna scan your cat. We're gonna take this oh, bone to good. the hospital good. and we're gonna run it through an instrument that takes very millimeter scans of the internal structure of the bone. When we get a hundreds, sometimes thousands of those scans, we stack them together, you get a 3D image, and then you can look inside and see what's going on inside the bone and what's happening. Oh, wow, so you're telling me it takes thousands of pictures to know what's going on inside that little thing? Sometimes it can. This wow. happens in humans, too. If you break a bone, if you have uh, something going on in your head, they'll put you through the CT scanner and, and take those little millimeter slices through the internal structure of your head or your arm, whatever's broken, and use the same treatment to diagnose injuries in humans. Oh, wow. I, I got a cousin, you might want to scan his brain too. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty wild. Hey, uh, you got any other cool things that we can look at down here? We do have several. All right, hey, let's go take a look, man. Let's do it. All right. So we're here looking at more of the skull from Garney the Triceratops to see what else we can learn from his other skull bones. So what we have here is the, more of the front of Garney's skull. In the back that you just saw, that was the shield or the frill of the Triceratops. So we, here we got the horns and some of the cheekbones and some other bones. Hey, uh, yo, uh, what is this uh, spaceship looking bone over here? This guy right here? Yeah, this weird looking thing. Well, this is no spaceship, believe it or not. This is a brain case. So this is the back of, the, back of Garney's skull. So the first vertebrae in the backbone would attach right here. And see this little opening there? You sure do. That's where the spinal cord would enter the brain. And Whoa. Garney's brain would sit right here. That's wild. It is wild. And these little wings in your spaceship here, yes, these yes, are yes, actually yes. processes that buttress the frill. So you'll have that big shield up here. These things make hold those these things hold the shield in place. Oh, wow. Hey, Brad, that's where the lasers would go on my spaceship. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's why I'm looking. So that's the brain case. The other cool things we have here are what are the most notable uh, things in a Triceratops? My, my favorite part. Brad, my favorite part. It's your favorite, the stabby part. The stabby part. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. This is the horn. Whoa. Oh, this is Garney's right orbital horn. So orbital means above the eye. And in fact, this guy right here that's the, or that's the eyeball. What? You tell me his eyeball goes there? Yep, that's the upper part of the eyeball. And what's oh. interesting about this guy is just like the frill, it's got what we have, it's got pathologies, much like the frill back there. So you see these really weird bumps here, those shouldn't <laughs> be here. So if you look at that one, and then you grab the other one really quick. Oh, wow. It's nice and smooth. You don't see those bumps like you do on this one. So this, an injury occurred sometimes while, while Garney was alive. Again, it looks like they rehealed, but just like with the frill, we're gonna CAT scan this guy too. Yeah, that's right, see what's going on in there, huh? And by doing that, we can see exactly what happened to this horn. And if it survived, it kind of looks like it regrew. It looked like we survived it, but we won't know until we get that CT done. Oh, wow, man, that's awesome. Thank you for showing us that. You betcha, pretty cool stuff, huh? Yeah. What's that sharp object you got over there, buddy? It looks like a tooth. This guy here? Yeah, that guy right there. That's not a tooth. Remember how we were talking about the little spiky things on the back of the frill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of those guys. This is an epoxipital or epiparietal. These are the little horns. English, that, buddy, English. That's what they're called, man. Okay. They're little horns that adorn the back Can you say it one more time just so I get it? Epoxipital. 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 Okay. I, I, I think I got it. I think you got it. I got it. Right. So the back of the frill, these would be all over. They'd probably have 10 to 15 of these guys wow, all around the back a lot. of the frill. Yeah, it's a lot. As the animals get larger and 
bigger, they flatten out and they don't really have this point. So we can tell just by looking at this piece right here, this was a younger animal, not a full adult, because it's pointy. Oh, wow! Mm -hmm. Man, the things you know just by observation. That's right. Yeah. That's just like the points that we saw in the cast of the small skull upstairs of the Triceratops. Yeah! In the growth series. Yeah! <laughs> oh man, I'm learning so much today. All right, let's go see what else we can find to talk about in the collections. Let's go!